Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the study here this morning. And we're going to continue where we left off yesterday. Um, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the time that we have each morning to open your word together. And we invite your Spirit's presence to teach us, to lead us, to comfort us to convict us and empower us. There are many needs around us, Lord, and we feel um, that we are insufficient to meet those needs. We need your help, and um, we need your help in our lives as well. And we just pray, Lord, that the time that we spend studying will encourage us and um, Help us as we continue to make choices for you. Be with each person through thy spirit and be with us now. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay. So yesterday we were um, addressing all of these uh, lines and showing how that we have the big line of Ellen White that our movement is a zoom into that way mark called the Sunday law and that um, the line of the judges is a zoom into 9-11 as the second day or the second angel arriving and that in that line of the judges um, we have each of these judges that have a line in and of themselves. And right now we're looking at that uh, zoom in to that line that is uh, the first way mark, the arrival of the first message. And this is the line of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. Now, uh, we looked at that line first, and, and that line doesn't bring us to... Um, uh, I mean, it, it, it starts at 9-11, so that's what we know that Judges is zoomed into. And so it's going to uh, bring us uh, to October 22, 2014, because that line is addressing, um, one is it's addressing the 2520, but the time in relate, relation to that. So the chronology of the 2520 is involved there. Um, as far as the second angel's message, which we're looking at here when we zoom into it, is Ehud. So, so that's another zoom down on that line if we wanted to look at it this way. So if we have the big line, then we have the line of this movement from 1989 to the Sunday Law. Then we have the line of the judges. And then we have Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. That is a zoom into the first angel's message on that line. And now we're looking at Ehud, that is a zoom into the second angel's message on that line. So, you know, we're five levels down from the way mark of the Sunday law. And hopefully that makes sense to people, that we can see that this, uh, this comes from our study of the lines in, in the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, for instance. And so... <clears throat> When we start to zoom into these lines, they become a lot more detailed. So we have details in these lines that typify these way marks on the lines above them. And one of the problems that this movement has had is that it, it hasn't recognized this. And we keep thinking that we're in the big line when we haven't got there yet. So... So that's basically a summary of the first part. So now we were looking at some of these details of this line of Ehud, which is about the second angel's message. And um, so we, we have some of these symbols here. Uh, Ehud, he, which is a two-edged sword, left-handed, son of the right hand. These are these symbols that we had in Ehud. There's a present that's going to be delivered. And what we had is the 2520 arrives, 
And, and Jeff marks the 2520 as seven years before uh, Newport um, in 2012. So we would say the 2520 arrives in 2005. Though that's not quite as clear. It has to do with Jeff's first public presentations of the 2520, which were um, around that time, but exactly when I don't think we have a recording of it. Of and it, it was something that he had run out of material to present, and so he he did it at the end of a series of meetings, and he drew out the prophetic mirror, the the basic understanding of it. So that was just the two twenty five twenties with the forty six years at either end. Now that message is going to increase in knowledge, and in two thousand ten we have um, this message which had arrived, it's now delivered as this present. And so we're gonna look at the story of Ehud again and just see why, what verses we can place here. But there is basically three events in 2010 that are significant. Um, there's Parminder's presentations which begin at the end of 2009 and go into 2010 where he's gonna do uh, 20 presentations on the 2520. Um, there is the paper by Johannes Koletsky in April of 2010, where he presents the 2520 without using Leviticus 26. He's going to use um, basically the book of Daniel and the story of Joseph. <clears throat> and then we're gonna have um, in 2012, we're going to have the empowerment, um, and that's going to be marked by the quarries of Gilgal when he turns. That's when um, Ehud returns from Gilgal and goes back um, to deliver his message. And that's Jeff's presentation at Newport on April 27th, 2012. And then the second angel's message arriving is this expansion of this 2520 understanding in regard to the four seven times. So Jeff is going to present the four seven times, uh, Manasseh, um, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah, these events. He discovers that at the same time that I do. Um, just a week before that camp meeting at Sylvan Lake, Alberta. And I present the four seven times that I focus upon not so much who is the king at the time, but the various captivities. So you have the captivity of Manasseh, Jehoiakim, uh, Jehoiachin. Well, it's not really the captivity of, it's going to be the captivity of Daniel in the time of Jehoiakim. And then Jehoiachin's captivity, and then finally Zedekiah's. Um, and that's going to open up the understanding of the four seven times in relationship to these periods of time. Uh, but there is also in, um, uh, you know, in that in 2013, that's going to be opening up the chronological aspects. So we know in 2013, uh, Jeff is going to ask the question, and it's not because it came from uh, Emiliano study in 2013 on Ezra 7 9. So he's going to ask the question on the last day of that camp meeting regarding um, what day would be the first day of the fifth month in 1844. And I do that calculation on that day, August 31st, 2013. And um, then in 2014, at the camp meeting in June 22nd in Arkansas, Noel is going to go through and explain that um, uh, to the movement. So when I do it, it's not, the movement doesn't know anything about it. Um, I figure it out, but you know, I'm not really anybody. So, you know, nobody really hears about it. I don't present it or anything, um, but Noel's gonna present that. And then uh, at the camp meeting in the fall, I do presentations on October 20th and 21st. And that those messages are uh, an expansion of what was presented at Sylvan Lake 
with a lot more information regarding chronology. So, um, and I presented in the summer of, uh, in, um, uh, in Alberta as well, my first presentations on the chronological spans of time. And, and what I present there is actually, um, some of that is in that paper by Johannes Koletsky in 2010. That is, we both had noticed the 504 years from 34 AD to 538, and that that's two times 252, and the five times 252, that is 1260 from 538 to 1798. And that together, there are two periods that together are seven times 252. So I understand that in 2014. It's not going to be till 2016 that Stephen asked me to count backwards from 34 AD. And we get to um, Jacob blessing his 12 sons. But anyway, as far as a formalization of what had happened in 2013, 2014 expands all of that. Now, what we ended up doing when we drilled this line, um, and you can see the symbols under there. This is this tearing time. He passes Gilgal, right? Um, and... Um, and then you're going to have this trumpet. Now, the reason why we put the trumpet there as September 23rd, 2017, uh, this is the Revelation 12 sign prophecy, which occurs on the first day of the seventh month on the biblical calendar. Um, and so that, that's why the trumpet there, that's the Feast of Trumpets. So we use that trumpet to mark that um, date. And that's going to be an expansion of time there. That's going to be 777 days before November 9th, 2019. Um, and we have the symbol then of July 18th that's presented there as a prediction before midnight. And so when we get to October 13th, 2018, we have these symbols of the Levites. We have the 10,000, which the days which leads us to March 27th. And um, and this message, October 13th, 2018, we marked as the midnight cry. So it is the midnight cry in some line. Here in this line, we don't have it as the midnight cry. We have it as the arrival of the third angel's message. Um, but it is the midnight cry in some lines. Um, the significance of significance of that message is it leads us to uh, the confirmation of 11.9. So we know that 9.11 is uh, a symbol for 11.9. So, so that's that line. <clears throat> um, now, so we probably should write out some of these dates a bit more. Um, I don't have specific dates for Parminder studies in 2010, and and they I know they started in 2009, like in December. Um, so they're gonna, and how how often he presented the studies? There's 20 studies. I don't know how often they were presented, but we're gonna have April 2010, and then um, also that you know I meet. Uh, let me see in 2010. That's when I'm going to be, if, if you see in the line above, that's when I'm going to meet Jeff, right? So, so my introduction to the 2020 occurs there at the Oklahoma camp meeting, uh, which is marked as the second angel arrives uh, there at the end of that camp meeting. But so any, any questions or thoughts about this? Okay, so um, we're going to look at the scriptures in a moment. Now, on the, on the chart above, we have the ozone camp meeting in 2004. Um, and we don't know the actual date of that camp meeting. I can't seem to find it, which is probably why we didn't have the date in there originally. Um, and um, another question that we had, it was November. That's what 
I remember it was November of 2004. I just don't know the dates. Um, and um, the other point that we had discussed, though I don't, it's not really on this line, was when Jeff was disfellowshipped. And that is December 3rd, 2015, according to Pat Rampey. So, um, and it was while he was doing a camp meeting in, was it in Wales or was it in Germany? I know in 2015 he was, well, it was just before that camp meeting, I think, in December. Where was that camp meeting, Stephen? Was there one in Wales and one in... Um, well, I was at one in Wales. And that was yeah, December. I wasn't there at that, that, that one. I think it's Kermit. Yeah, it's just uh, people from the UK were there. Uh, so Perminder, Anjit, and so forth. Yeah, because I think it was, wasn't it the 2000 cap meeting where um, Clayton showed up when Jeff was somewhere in in that area? Yeah, but, that was in uh, 2014. That was 2014. Okay, so that was a year earlier. So maybe I'm getting those two. Yeah, that's right. That was 2014. Yeah, the 2015 one, Jeff did go there somewhere in 2015. Because I know the 2015, he was in, maybe it was France he was in. Because um, I came up in, in a conversation, he had some lady come up and said that they were wrong about um, when the fourth age, when the fourth generation began, that it began in 1957, according to me. This was a trouble person of some sort. Uh, and so... Uh, Jeff said that I caused him lots of uh, heartburn over, over that issue. And so we corrected that in 2016 so that the movement accepted that the fourth generation began in 2015 and not at 9-11. Um, so anyway, so I know that because in 2016 we were invited uh, to go to Arkansas as students, and that was in the spring after the event in 2015. So yeah, so it was in 2014, uh, yeah, that Clayton showed up. So there was these camp meetings in, uh, in December of those years. But anyway, so we have Jeff's disfell disfellowship is December 3rd. Some of the significance of that is that we have um, December 3rd, 321 is if you read it backwards. And that would be a symbol for the Sunday law. It's also um, uh, the 20th day of the second month on the Islamic calendar. It's also uh, the 12th day of the third month on the French calendar. So that uh, would also be backwards, the 12th day, third month, three, two, one. And um, if we... Um, Hadn't added the extra month in that, and that's a very close call in 2015. It would have been the 20th day of the ninth month. And it's also the three, uh, the three, 360 for the Julian day number. So when you go to no, noon on December 3rd, uh, 2015, it's going to be uh, 2457360 on the Julian day. Um, I think that was it. Uh, that was significant. So we don't know what it means yet. It's not part of this line, but it's just something that we have to keep in mind. It'd probably be part of Jeff's personal line. Okay, so... Let's go to... Uh, the passage dealing with Ehud. So we, we spent a lot of time looking at Ehud before. Um, the interesting thing about Ehud is he begins in Judges 3.12. So I know that has nothing to do with Jeff's disfellowship, um, the line of Ehud, but it's interesting. We were just talking about this symbol, right? So the 12th 
inverse of the third. So that would again be a 321 in reverse, just probably a coincidence that we happen to be talking about this at this time. Now, we say that Ehud um, is going to represent this 2520 message. And um, so this is after Othniel, the land had rest 40 years. And then we have East Ehud, and it's with Eglon, king of Mo Moab. So the Moabites are the result of this incest with Lot. And we have this uh, Ammon and Am Amalek, the Malachites, are also connected with this period uh, of the enemies. And it says they possess the city of the palm trees. So that that's where we get the 2520. The city of the palm trees is Jericho. And uh, the children of of Israel served Eglon, king of Moab, 18 years. So we have an 18 year period of persecution. And then in verse 15, they cry unto the Lord and he raises them up. A deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left handed. Right. And but Benjamin means son of the right hand. And of course, there's lots of left-handed people in Benjamin. And um, then Ehud makes a dagger. So um, with two edges of a cubit in length. So why did we associate this two-edged dagger that's a cubit in length? Why do we associate this with the 2520? Yeah, so the movement was united at that time, right, prior to all of the events. So under the 2520, the movement is in a more united sense. That's uh, based on a comment of Angelus there. So when the 2520 arrives, and we, did, we didn't put a specific date for that, but that's going to be Ehud. And it's after 18 years under the king of Moab. Now, had we determined a symbolism based upon those 18 years? Um, well, I think we, we dealt with it. I don't remember specifically what we did with 18 years. Wasn't Ellen White 81 at the time of the worst um general conference of her life yeah yeah so i know you always bring this up whenever we run into 18 i just don't see how that relates to yeah from 2001 to 2019 is 18 years right um i just don't think it relates here in the context of this um, well i'm i'm trying to say a time of darkness in relation okay. to what we're talking about here yeah Okay, um, but as far as internally in this movement, there the darkness that we have here is what darkness? What darkness are they addressing when the 2520 arrives? Well, that would just be simply a lack of understanding of our history. That is, we hadn't known about this prophecy before. So it's not... Um, it, it, it brings us back to understanding Miller's rules because that's part of what this whole line of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar is. Um, but here specifically to the 2520, it's Ehud addresses this specifically. Right, That's what this message 
of Ehud is about, and and that would be the darkness, which I don't think I don't know if I would relate that to the General Conference where Ellen White's eighty one. Now, so the 18 years, there's different ways, of course, this could be understood, right? We could apply this different 18 years in different ways. Um, how could we look at it? I mean, we have 2001 to 2019. So that's going to give us the November um, 11th or November 9th date in 2019. That's what we would normally focus on. What else could we do? I think we looked before, if we count from um, um, September 11th, 2001, and we count 18 prophetic years, it brings us to June 9, 2019, which is one year after time came into the movement, whether that's significant or not. On the rabbinic calendar, it happens to be Pentecost. So, so those 18 years, um, I mean, it could relate to that anniversary of when time came into the movement. I think that's what I had applied it before. And because it's Pentecost on the rabbinic calendar, it would relate to um, those uh, two 9-11 prayers. The first one is actually going to be uh, closing Pentecost and opening the Sabbath in 2017. But that has an anniversary date, too, of 2018 um, with the 9-11 prayer there. Well, I, there, there's something else mathematically if we look at it. Okay. As was pointed in the chat, we're looking at the 18 year span from 2001 to 2019, right? Yeah, that's that's one way we could look at it. So that would bring us to, if we use prophetic years, it would bring us to the June 9th, 2019 date. But wouldn't this also be part of a time span? Because 2019, was being stated as the time when the movement began, uh, became prepared for its ministry because that was 30 years after <clears throat> it had been technically founded in 1989, right? Yeah. So from 1989 to 2001 you have <clears throat> mathematically two multiplied by six old and new testament multiplied by the number of man and then in the 18 years you would have three multiplied by six so you would have three as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit coming by the number of, of, of man. Yeah. So, and the way that we would look at that as um, in the life of Christ is he's 12 when he goes to that Passover, right? When he, when he goes to the, when he's before the, the doctors of the law in the temple, right? 
Yeah. And then there's going to be 18 years until he's uh, baptized. Right. right. So now the other thing is if we take 18 years and we count it as prophetic years, it's 6,480 days. And 6,480 days is 80 times 81. So you get that 81 times 80 there, which is interesting. Now, was it from the time that he was 12 at that Passover, was it that he, he had 18 years until he was baptized, or was that a different time period? Because he would have been 12. That would have been the spring of the year, and his baptism would have taken place in the fall. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's not exactly. Um, I mean, he was born also in in the fall. So I'm asking the question. Twelve and a half on, years. Okay, I'm asking the question based on <clears throat> David's seven and a half years ruling out of Hebron, right? Yeah. So how does that relate? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'd make anything of it other than, you know, just counting it as 12 and 18. The main point here is that we can see the symbols for um, Ehud that they connect to the 2520. The 18 years themselves um, can represent this movement from 2001 because that's what that's what we're really focusing on here. We're saying that these lines, the lines of the judges, is a zoom into 2001 as the arrival of the second angel. We're saying that the line of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar is a zoom in to that first way mark, which is 9-11, right? So, um, so it's, it's giving us information about that way mark in the line of the judges and showing us that this is about a revival that is connected to uh, the Lion of God, right, Othniel, and and this is a message that is uh, first going to address the significance of 9-11, but also uh, bring in the 2520, right? So so Othniel, Uhud, and Shabangar address these, and they address ultimately time, because with 9-11, we have introduced into the movement a symbol that helps us understand about time. 1989, we, when we look at it at first, there is nothing about time, but 9-11 does bring in time into the movement because of the symbols that start to arrive there with 9-11. It's gonna connect us to um, obviously Revelation 9, Right, so we're going to have this third woe coming in. So that 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 and that's going to um, understanding of Revelation nine is going to lead ultimately to uh, July 18, 2020. And that's the thing that Jeff uh, saw when we had the July 18 date, is that the foundation that had been laid, all of the things that had occurred all of the light that this movement had received culminated in that prediction for, for the movement. But here we're looking at, you know, earlier, right? Just the 2520 itself. When we look at Ehud, that's the focus of this. So this dagger, um, the significance of the dagger, Right. We know it's it's 
you know, they used to be translated as dagger, but in, you know, in uh, the cutting instrument, a knife, a sword, other sharp implement, axe, dagger, knife, mattock, sword, tool. So it could be just a sword, um, which had two edges. Now it's a cubit in length. So that's going to be 18 inches, which I think would refer to the blade itself, but it could maybe refer to the, the handle as well. So another 18. Yeah. And I would almost have to think it would be the blade itself, not the blade with the hilt. Yeah, that's what I would think. Okay. okay, and I was just looking up the word, um, just, yeah. So you, there's these different parts of a sword. Um, Could you refer to the hilt? So the hilt actually refers to uh, everything on the one side of the blade. So you got the hilt and the blade. And then the part where the person grabs the sword, that's called the heft. So, right. so I just because I was just wondering what word to use, but yeah, so the hilt is the correct way to look at that whole other part. So I think it would refer to um, the blade itself being 18 inches. Now, what was the significance of the right hand and the left hand? So Benjamin means Benjamin means the son of the right hand. But in Benjamin, there's lots of left-handed people for some reason. Right. So we would say that this would refer to a, a chiastic structure. So the two-edged sword, in a sense, represents that as well. But also this right-left-hand idea. Mm -hmm. Now, there's this present sent to Eglon, king of Moab. Right. So so he's going to take this dagger along with him now. So uh, the present, I mean, there's two presents here. Right. Uh, he has the present that's given to him, but there's also the present of the sword. Right. You know, the present of the sword, you would put in quotation marks. But we have in, in our line that the present is delivered. Right. So he's going to deliver this present. He's going to leave. Everyone's going to be dismissed. And um, and, but then he's going to turn again. So that's Judges 319. Right, so the present is delivered, that's Judges 3.18, but when he turns again, so what's the significance of turning again? It's the Hebrew word shuv. Uh, he turns from the quarries, which were by Gilgal. These are the, the quarries. It means carved or graven image or a quarry. We see that this is probably referring to idol worship, which are by Gilgal. And remember that this whole thing, addresses Gilgal in that we say that Gilgal in Judges 2, when this angel comes um, in Judges 2, verse 1, representing 9-11, this angel of the Lord comes up from Gilgal to Boken, to the weepers, right? And so we mark that as 9-11. So we can see that this whole line uh is, is addressing 
Yeah, so Angela asked the question there. I don't know if it's relevant, but somebody has a response to that. I don't. <clears throat> now, Ehud, of course, is specifically focused upon uh, the 2520, but we know that this still all relates to this whole line, relates to 9-11. And so the quarries of Gilgal, he turns. So, um, so this is turning away from idolatry. And, and we know that that this message of the 2520, does it help us turn away from idolatry? Like, is the 2520 related to the rejection of spiritual formation in 2001, September of 2001, accepted by the church? It should be. Yeah. And we're going to say that it's Newport, April 27th, 2012, when Jeff presents um, this message. That's the turning away, because there's this disfellowshipping that happens in Newport. And af right after that disfellowshipping, Jeff is going to go to Newport. And do this presentation regarding Newport, New Hampshire, where the charts are first presented, the 1863 charts, where we have, we don't have the 2520 on them, except that we do have them hidden, right? They're hidden in that week of Christ. So that's going to be the empowerment of this message regarding the 2520, right? Now, then we're going to have these closed doors, and Ehud then is going to deliver the other present. That's going to be the arrival of this next message. So can we see if, the, if we look at this in our movement, we have a message, the 2520, that separates us from the church, correct? Agreed. And, and so you have to accept this message to accept the next message. And, yeah, can we see that, and, we, and we can see that many of the people that came into the movement, um, because we addressed that as far as this Oklahoma camp meeting in the line above, where we have the empowerment is this Oklahoma camp meeting on November 7th. That's going to be Jeff's birthday, 2010, when I meet Jeff that many of that group, in they're going to accept the 2520, but now they're going to be presented with a new um, message. And this is going to be an expansion of the 2520. And, and ultimately, it's going to be related to time, right? And now, because I experienced this personally, and I understand what happened um, in regard to understanding the four seven times, that this generally was not accepted by um, the people who left in 2014. Yeah. Uh, and just a note there from Angelo. So April 7th, 31 AD is when Jesus is crucified. And, and this is lining up with Newport, April 27th, 2012. And that's going to be 1800 and um, or 1981 years, right? So it's whether what whatever the 1981 means, I don't know, but how many years it is. <clears throat> okay, so then we have the second message now at the Sylvan Lake, Lake Camp meeting, uh, where um, Jeff and I present both the four seven times. This is actually leading to a departure from our understanding of the 2520 of Miller. That is, we see that the that that Leviticus 26 that Miller makes skips a step when he just goes from the seven times to 25 20 years. But it's not as simple as that. That you first need the fulfillment of Leviticus 26 for literal Israel. Then you have their um, reform line of the three decrees. So Leviticus 26 is going to bring them the, into captivity to Babylon. And then the three decrees are going to release them from that captivity, typifying 
the end of the world, right? God's people in 1798. So that that those three decrees at the beginning typify the three angels' messages at the end. The three decrees commence the 2300 days, three angels' messages um, complete that period of time. And um, of course, the 70 weeks transfers the blessings and curses from literal Israel to spiritual Israel. So without the 70 weeks, you can't just jump to 25, 20 years. You need the 70 weeks to give you that transition. Now, Miller probably understands this to some degree, right? He doesn't explicitly go through the detail of it. and But I don't know if he, he really understood the fulfillment of the four or seven times. Um, but he does understand that, you know, you were not just going from, uh, you know, from literal Israel to spiritual Israel without the 70 weeks. You need those things. One of the criticisms against the 2520 is people say, well, God is cursing literal Israel. You know, how could that apply at all to God's church at the end of the world? But of course, you would have to make the same argument about the 2300 days. Right. So since the 2300 days begin in the time of literal Israel, the 70 weeks are needed for that transition, for that probationary period for literal Israel, for the 2300 days to have any meaning. Because obviously um, the sanctuary that was destroyed um, is not really the sanctuary that's going to be cleansed in 1844. It's going to be uh, the heavenly sanctuary. Right. So so you need the 70 weeks. That's just not. The significance of the 70 weeks in the prof prophetic periods isn't well uh, delineated by Adventists. They don't seem to really address that. <clears throat> so so anyway, when we deal with this um, Gilgal symbol and he turns Right, so this is right, he's going to turn. Um, we can see that he comes back and he's going to deliver this present, and so that present is going to be um, when he turns and he comes back, he's going to give that sword, he's going to. Uh, do that, and that's going to be the arrival of the second angel's message when the sword comes the, at, in this closed doors, right? And we can see, is there a closed door when the second angel arrives April 19th, 1844? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so when, now is there a closed door in 2013 that occurs in this movement? Now we know it's going to be manifest in 2014 that uh, all of these different ministries are at odds with Jeff, right? But we would say the second angel arrives at this Sylvan Lake camp meeting in 2013. So we're going to have Jamal Sankey presenting for the first half of the week. And then Jeff arrives on the Wednesday and he presents for the rest of the week. And uh, the messages that are being given prior to Jeff's arrival are messages that at the time I didn't pick up on um, because um, we had... Um, Roland Temple presenting messages about uh, narcissism. And I didn't find out till later that he was actually directing this at Jeff. So before Jeff arrived, he, he gave these messages about what a narcissist is, supposing that we would recognize that he was talking about Jeff. And then and, uh, Jamal is presenting messages that uh, at the time, again, I did not see where they were coming from. But these were messages that were um, basically attacking Jeff because I just didn't understand the issues at the time. 
So the book of Joel and, um, and things like that. So when Jeff comes, he, he actually is unaware of what was happening before he arrives. But he's presenting this light that came from, from Emiliano, at least on the last day, and, and also this light of the four seven times. So though that group that, that left, all the different ministries that left, they actually don't even really get to hear this message of the four seven times. But we're going to see that the people that are still in the movement that are somewhat sympathetic with those that left, uh, they're definitely not going to accept the four seven times. And, and so we're going to see that um, there are many people who are in the movement who want to maintain Miller's understanding of prophecy uh, in, in chronology, right? So there, there's lots of things that, that I'm discovering that people aren't going to accept for the very simple reason Miller never taught it, right? So there is a group of people in our movement that want to be Millerites in doctrine, to a large degree. And these people are going to fall away. So, so we're being tested in this period of time. So Sylvan Lake, if we go here, here uh, back to this diagram. So with Sylvan Lake 2013, we can see that this the doors close and this sword is put into Eglon, right? with this understanding of the four seven times. The Jeff and I both present. And then we're going to have Arkansas 2014. Um, that's when I'm going to present and formalize the message. And there's two aspects of that message that are formalized are the first day of the fifth month and at the four seven times, right? So those are going to be presented at those two camp meetings. First in June, that's going to be the first day of the fifth month. And then in October, uh, an expansion of the four seven times, showing that they're periods of 70 years. But it's going to be empowered when I present at Lambert Church on September 23rd, 2017, the very date that this Revelation 12 sign prophecy is given. And I'm addressing Samuel Snow's letters in the prediction before midnight. And so that message, why, why am I placing it there? Well, one is that that is the, the Feast of Trumpets, and we have that symbol in the story of Ehud. So if we go back there. Right, so there's this tarrying time that goes on. And, and Ehud escaped while they tarried and passed beyond the quarries and escaped um, to Serirath. Ser 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 and it came to pass when he was come that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim. And the children of Israel went down with him from the mount and he before them. So, so this blowing of the trumpet, what is the symbol that's there? So we should put these verses in these charts. Uh, so what's the symbol that's there? Judges 3.27. Don't you have the 273 that we find in the book of Acts? Yeah, so we're going to have this, yeah, the 273, right? March 27th. Now, I know September is the ninth month, but it was originally the seventh month. And so even September 23rd represents 723. So if you read that backwards, it's 327, right? So that, that's an iteration of that. <clears throat> so we're going to have that. The tarrying time, so I'm just going to put... Uh, these different verses in the chart. So I put it in the chart there with the trumpet. Um, you can't see that right now, but. Uh, so, so if we say the 2520 arrives, what verse would we use in this story of Ehud? Um,
I mean, it's good to say in 315 that Ehud arrives, right? So, so that would be um, 315, whether that verse means anything. It's still at least the verse that we would look at. So when I do the chart, I put that in there. And then the present is delivered. Um, that's 317. So, I mean, it's probably 315 and 16 that we would uh, address as well for the first, first way mark. And then uh, when he turns at the quarries, that's going to be 318. Oh, that's going to be when he offers the present. So, uh, so that's 17 and 18, pardon me. So it's going to be 319 is the other one. You'll see this in a minute once I switch. I just need to look at, at this when I do this. So we get 319 is when he turns from the quarries. And then 320 He's going to go in and uh, you're going to close the doors there. He came unto him and he was sitting in a summer parlor, which he had to mess himself alone. So um, we say now there's also this secret errand. 319 as well. Yeah, so they don't they don't really mention the doors being closed, but we know they would be. So that's three. So when he puts the dagger in him, that's going to be 321, right? And had then, we, had we determined a symbolism from verse three twenty one about <clears throat> where the dagger was taken from the right thigh and thrust by the left hand into the belly? Yeah, well, we did address it. So, so we, so what, what? Because you were the one that addressed it originally. What, what was it again? Well. <clears throat> When you're when you're reaching with your left hand to your right thigh, of course you're you're reaching across your body. Yep. Yep. So it's interesting, you know, as as you continue through this, you have the blade that's a cubit. Yeah. And the blade technically would end at the hilt. But it's also interesting when you look at Judges 3.22, that yeah. the haft yeah. went in the after the blade. Yeah. Yep. So the entire thing goes in. So the blade being a cubit, are we... We're looking at this, this two-edged edged dagger as being a message right yeah so is the two-edged dagger another representation of the 2520 and is it possible that the haft is a mess a uh, representation of the 2300 um how about um I mean, I don't know if I would do it that way. Maybe the whole sword is the 2520 prophetic mirror. The whole dagger? Or the, yeah, the whole dagger. So, it, or at least is the 2520 and you have the 2300 and the 220. I don't know.
And that could, because the 220 is the one thing that wasn't understood by the movement. Exactly. Right. So we had understood the 2520, we understood the 2300 days, but it's not until we look at the four or seven times that we get an understanding of the 220. So in, um, in understanding this, at least in placing it on this chart, um, that is the arrival of the second message at Sylvan Lake, which includes the 220. Right, so that's the 2300 um, and the 2520 together to be the, or, or the 220 together to be the 2520. That's what we understand at Sylvan Lake. You know, at least we begin to understand. Now, um, we have this tearing time. So the tearing time, of course, would refer to the period um, from the first disappointment till technically, you know, till October 22, 1844. But we have this um, um, in, these, in this line here. So just so people can see this again. Right. So what I've done here is I put in uh, these verses. So 321. And, and we would probably put 22 there as well, right? So can we say that when that message arrives, and, and we also say it's a two-edged sword. Remember, Jeff and I both, both present the four seven times from our independent study. <clears throat> but the haft here, is is what would be included as the 220 right so the 18 inches represents the 2300 plus the 220 to be the 2520 does that seem uh that's an interesting application yeah because you know this is all about the 2520 and we can see here if we're saying that the blade represents that message, I mean, it's the prophetic mirror, but it's more than just that. It is the 220 as well, the haft as well. So now in the tarrying time period that they're gonna uh, tarry until they're ashamed, right? Right. Um, now, it's, it's actually here where we more get the shut doors being mentioned, right? So we say that there's closed, closed doors. Now, this um, uh, porch that they talk about, this is a colonnade. It's a row of pillars, right, that he's going to pass through, and he's going to shut the doors. So, so we would have to include verse 23 here with the shut doors in this chart. Right, so we go because that's where we get the, the closed doors. So this is what happens with Sylvan Lake Camp Meeting. And 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 that I mean this this fits very well. I mean it's not I don't think we're making a stretch here. And um and then you're gonna have this tarrying time. So in in verse uh, twenty-five. They tarried till they were ashamed, and behold, he opened not the doors of the parlor. Therefore, they took a key and opened, and behold, their Lord had fallen down dead on the earth. Okay, so. So this is the key that's mentioned here, I would say, is. Um, uh, Tearing time passes, and we need this key. So the key opens the doors. But since you're since you're also looking at this key, with the reference of, then their Lord 
was found fallen dead upon the earth. Yeah. Isn't this another representation of Babylon is fallen, is fallen? Yeah. Yeah, and this key, I mean, remember, there's the key to the prophetic chart, the 1863 prophetic chart as well. And, and that's actually an essential part of my understanding of this message. Because one of the things I present in 2014 is the 1863 chart. Um, and that the 1863 chart ha has 2,604 years. And that we can see on the 1863 chart this prophetic mirror that began in, you know, 7, 742 BC, right? That whole prophetic mirror. Um, and that it symbolized basically the rejection of the 2520 on the 1863 chart is represented. Um, so, <clears throat> so these things are all part of part of this, right? So this tearing time, this is going to be uh, verse 24 and 25. Okay. Now, I put Gilgal in there uh, just because um, but that's going to be when Ehud escaped while they tarried. So this is going to be while they are tarrying, he's going to pass beyond the quarries. Um, but I don't know why I put Gilgal because it did, well, I mean, the quarries are by Gilgal, I guess. is, But he's going to escape unto Seriath. And, and the number there in Hebrew is 8167. So it has all the digits of 186 and 187. But it, it means roughness or shaggy, right? So we had addressed this before and often refers to a she-goat. It's the only place it's mentioned in the Bible. So, so what did we? What? How did we understand Ehud's escape? I, I don't know if we we really came to any conclusions. But we can see anyway how this relates to the key camp meetings in 2014 in Arkansas. The messages that are given there as a formalization of the Silver and Wake messages. Ehud's escape parallels Jotham's escape. Okay, that, that, that's significant, right? Now Jotham's going to be a message in relation to the to the week of Christ, which is, of course, this structural chiasm that's attached to um, <clears throat> uh, well, also when we look at the Revelation 12 sign prophecy that I present on um, well, I don't present it, but I present uh, Samuel Snow's letters. Remember Samuel Snow's letters, the center of that chiasm is May 2nd, 1844. That letter addresses the chiasm in the week of Christ. So, so here we have the trumpet in 327. But he blows a trumpet in Mount Ephraim. So can we say that a trumpet was blown in Mount Ephraim in 2017?
we definitely can see the relation to what was presented on September 23rd, 2017, the Samuel Snow's letters and their connection to the symbol of July 18th. Uh, and we can see that that's a 327, but we can also see October 13th, 2018 is a 327, right? That is, we have in these verses um, when he makes this call. So is it possible that we're, we, we should revive these, revise these lines in some way? I mean, because we have the March 27th with the 10,000, that also gives us 327. Or would we just take it that this empowerment of the second angel's message points to October 13th? Because what happens on October 13th? What is the significance of October 13th in relationship to July 18th? Because October 13th is going to give us confirmation of November 9th. But it's going to be based upon symbols attached to what? So that lead to November or to July 18th. Do people understand what I'm what I'm asking? Uh, the three nine one and the R three nine one point five and the two five two. Okay, so yeah, so what what ends up happening? So we have the symbol of this trump. This is the prediction before midnight symbol of July eighteenth. Here it's going to be shown as the empowerment of the second angel. So when I present that on September 23rd, 2017, it's 777 days before November 9th. But remember, when the message of the second angel comes, it's actually announcing the arrival of the third, right? Behold, the bridegroom cometh on the 10th day of the seventh month. So on October 13th, that new message arrives that is being proclaimed from this understanding of not just the 2520, but all of the th things related to it. But this is a closed door to some degree, right? Because you're going to have a group that is going to accept this message of the confirmation of November 9th as being prophetic. And because when you do that, you're going to accept the symbols that gave that confirmation in the first place, the 391.5. So without the 391.5 and all of the symbols of July 27th and August 11th and um, structural chiasms, the book of Ezekiel and its connection to Revelation 9, without that, we don't have July 18, 2020. So in that second angel being empowered, where we talk about July 18 as a symbol of this prediction before midnight, uh, when we have this message proclaimed on October 13th, it's really in fulfillment of that. And it's confirming November 9th, which is going to be 391 and a half days after October 13th. Right? But September 23rd, 2017 is 777 days before November 9th. <clears throat> so if we were going to put a fourth angel arrives on this line, um, I think we can do that, right? So if we're going to put a fourth angel arrives, right, I'm just going to borrow these boxes here. Can, can we do this? And what would we put here? Okay, so so we're just going to leave those dates for now. Let's look at these verses. <clears throat>
Um, so they slew Moab at that time, about 10,000 men, all lusty and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest for score years. So, so we would have definitely 329 as being um, this third angel's message, right? So they blow the trumpet, and 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 they're going to guard the the fords, right? That's what the that's what they're going to do. That's why he's calling Ephraim. They're going to come down from Mount Ephraim. They took they took the fords of the Jordan toward Moab, and suffered not a man to pass over. And they slew of Moab at that time about ten thousand men, all lusty and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. So that's going to be the arrival of the third angel. And then it just says, so Moab subdued that day under the hand of Israel. Um, and the land had rest four score years. So four score is 80 years. And we know after him is Shamgar. Now, Shamgar is part of that line of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar, right? He's going to be the third angel's message arriving. So can we can we put a a fourth angel arriving based on what we have here? Because Shamgar is just going to be October 22, 2014. I mean it's it, Shamgar message is going to be the same and I just want you to think this through because Sam, Shamgar's message when we draw the line of Ahud, Ehud it shows it October 22, 2014, right? That's what we put Shamgar as if we go back here. But yet in the line of Ehud, we do have that way mark. And, and this is consistent with how we understood Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, that way marks in one line can be a waymark in another line. They're just different waymarks. So is there anything that we can mark a fourth angel arriving in this line of Ehud? Can we put a date here that the fourth angel arrived? No. When we look at Shamgar, Shamgar is going to expand upon that, that date. Right. So so we address Shamgar as well. But this is the line of Ehud. So the line of Ehud can reach into events that are in the line of Shamgar. Right. And and does that make sense? So what what date would we put here as the fourth angel arriving? Well, if we look at the line of Shamgar. The line of Shamgar is going to come up to October 13th, 2018, right? So it's not going to go beyond that date that we have as the last date in the line of Ehud in how we have drawn out these lines. But the line of Shamgar is addressing, basically, this is going to be um, the history of, of my presentations relating to time up to October 13th, 2018. But Shamgar would have a fourth angel arriving as well, right? So in this line of Shamgar. So we haven't always been doing this. But in the line of Shamgar, if the third angel arriving is October 13th, 2018, just as it is, in the line of Ehud, right? They're both going to end, end on October 13th, 2018. There's just a different emphasis, right? 
Shamgar is more specifically going to address those messages relating all the way back to the Mayan calendar, right? So the fourth angel arriving in the line of Shamgar would be what date? So we haven't got to Shamgar yet, but, but we'll go through that. Okay, so we're going to come back to this uh, tomorrow. We're going to come to the line of Shamgar. But I'm just going to say that Shamgar points to July 18, 2020. So that is, that's the fourth angel in this line of Shamgar. And you'll see how this works, right? So, um, we'll just put a question mark there for now. And then when we go back to this one, I'm going to say that this is November 9th, 2019. And so what are we going to put there at November 9th? And we don't have a verse. So with this one, we're going to say, uh, 3 verse 29 to 30. <clears throat> this probably would um, include 28 actually. So we don't have another verse, but we do have Shamgar. And with Shamgar, we have his name uh, means a sword, right? And he's the son of Anath, which means an answer. So this is going to be 331. This is to answer by the sword. At Shamgar. And that is November 9th is an answer by sword, right? To this prediction regarding November 9th, even though this is on October 13th, that I do the calculation, I'm confirming, confirming November 9th by answering with a sword, that is with God's word, with Bible prophecy. Does that make sense? Does this seem satisfactory? So we got a bit more detail in here. So what we need to put here, of course, is um, we have Parminder's presentations. We have uh, April, uh, which is going to be Joseph. Studies on Joseph by... Um, uh, Johannes Koletsky. So that's going to relate to the 2520. And I don't need to put it in there, basically, but that's going to be, of course, the Oklahoma Cam meeting in 2010 as well.
Any observations or questions? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. So, so tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna look at Shamgar and what we did with that. Um. But but ultimately, even though we're starting, so remember, Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar are zoom into. Uh, 9-11 in the line of the judges. The line of the judges, and that's the first way mark in the line of the judges. And the line of the judges is zoom into 9-11 as the arrival of the second angel's message. Right, which is on Jeff's line, right? That's where he has two 9-11s. And what we see as we go through this line of the judges is that we connect 9-11 with 11-9. So that's what, that's what ends up happening even in those first three judges with, um, uh, you know, Ehud is going to bring us to November 9th, 2019. Shamgar is going to bring us beyond that to July 18th. But Shamgar in some ways just repeats what Ehud has done, but with a different emphasis, right? This emphasis in, um, with July 18th, and July 18th is connected to this line of failed predictions, right? So, so there's a whole bunch of things involved here. But we, we'll go through that uh, tomorrow. And um, so this week, we're still going to have, like today's Tuesday, right? So we're still going to have the study Wednesday and Thursday. The following week, I'm not going to be here Thursday, but it doesn't mean that we don't have to have a study. Um, I mean, you guys could have a study without me. But uh, we would have to decide that at some point. I just, I can't be here on the 27th. Now, of course, the 27th would be the 11 year anniversary of Newport. I mean, you could have an anniversary celebration of Jeff's presentation. Does anybody have the 10 part study that Jeff and Dario Taylor did just before his presentations in Newport on April 27th. Uh, I don't. I mean, maybe I do. I guess I could look. Um, we we probably have them because I I mean I have all kinds of PDFs that were given me. Okay, because this this was a video series that they did at their property. Yeah, I just I think I remember that um, there was a transcription made um, by uh, Pat Temple. I think she made a a transcription of it, but I could be thinking wrong. But I think that there was. <clears throat> Okay. So so we're done for today, but we'll we'll come back to this tomorrow to Shamgar. Okay, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today, for each person present, and for those that are watching later on on YouTube. Um, we pray, Lord, that you can continue to teach us and thank you for the light that has come as we've walked along this path. We ask for more light for our feet and the strength to walk in that light. 
Bless each person, be with them throughout this day, and bring us together again to study your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.